you understand? Hey, everybody. I'm Tony Jones, and welcome to the Tony Jones Show. Uh, this is not that people are willing to take the risk. It's, it's just sort of a, uh, a herd mentality, a lemming-like mentality. If you don't go with the flow, you're anti-American and therefore a suspect. The Tony Jones Show, featuring punk, rockabilly, psychobilly, and Providence, Rhode Island's finest, starts right now. He's a dangerous militia member, I hear. Oh, and there she blows. <laughs> Friends, the time for mediocrity and broadcasting is over. My name is Tony Jones, and you are tuned into the Tony Jones Show, your destination for talk and rock, online at TonyJones.org, Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show, and on the almighty Twitter at Tony Jones in R.I. With me, as always, is my occasional co-host, Mr. George Garner. George, good evening. Good evening. Kicking the uh, evening off with some Courtney Barnett, Pedestrian at Best, which is actually an album... I got for a holiday gift. Yes, 
the girlfriend and I still trade actual physical music. We're, we're like dinosaurs in that nature. Hey, that's okay. I mean, you know, the people that don't trade physical music are the same ones that lived on uh, top 40 singles back in the day. <laughs> you know, I figure that Newbury Comics has taken so much of my disposable income over the years that I, <laughs> I feel a, a personal responsibility to keep them, keep them going, help kind, them keep going. Kind of like a symbiosis it's going like, on there. It's like Stockholm Syndrome. You know, it's <laughs> like I'm, I, I must go to Newbury Comics. <laughs> I, I still go there. And I'll tell you, the, you know, the metal section, the uh, punk section still gets a workout. I mean, you know, we still buy, we are not the only ones that still buy physical CDs. And for, you know, of, of course, anybody who's listened to the show ever knows that we support local music here. And if you can put together a decent independent release... Uh, for local bands, their consignment program, as we have personally done with Tony Jones and the Cretan 3 and the Goners, uh, it's just a fantastic way to get your music out there. And it's cool to walk through the aisles and see, oh, you know, I know that band, I know that band. And they're, uh, they're not breaking the bank by any stretch of the imaginations, but it's a great way for a local band to uh, make a little bit of scratch. Absolutely. And there's just something, uh, I don't know, even in this digital age, even in this online age, there's something psychological. And you, Still to this day about seeing your work, your product in the CD bin. And there really is. Specifically that Courtney Barnett album, th getting the album itself had uh, Polaroid pictures of the bands and it had a pull-out folder and it had a second live album that came with it. So it really was, uh, I guess that's the way to, to put it out there is to really offer the extras when someone takes the time to grab your physical physical product. Yeah, make a work of art out of it. Right. That's, yeah. that's, what, they, you know, that's what it was all about back in the day. Yeah. Back in my day, you know, and that's a perfect segue to our in-studio guest, Crimson, because this guy's been around probably just as long as we've been around doing this stuff. Crimson, good evening. Good evening, Tony. So, so folks out there who have caught you on the show before or just know you personally, they know you from the band Absent, they know you from Motif Magazine, they know you from Independent Wrestling, and most recently they know you from Providence Roller Derby. Mm -hmm. So I think I asked you this last time, but... Uh, it's like it's like your children. Which one of those would be your favorite kid? It, that's and just like kids, like you really can't say you have an all-time favorite. Just ones that you need a vacation from that, every once that, in a while. Because that <laughs> exact question has been posed to me in the past, um, and I, I same thing. It's like you can't pick your favorite kid when it comes to projects. You know, they're they're kind of all your babies. Mm -hmm. It's all about like the longe longevity of it and like how much dedication you put to it, the time into it, and the results that come out of it. And if even if it's one person said, "Hey, I remember this. I really enjoyed myself like seeing you do this or being part of this project," then I'm like, "Okay, I did something good for a change." Which you know, it's, which is cool too because I have, you probably have the same. I don't want to say problem, but the same situation where I have people who know me from politics who have no idea I played punk rock, and I have people who hear me on the radio who have no idea I play punk rock or are into politics. So it's kind of, you know, when you're doing the multi-faceted genre thing, you're able to kind of carve out different groups of people you, to connect you with. You compartmentalize. Right. Which is probably a good thing. Unless you decide to run for office again, and then they start to drag out the video right. of the punk rock performance. <laughs> or they, you know, they... That, that one time at Jerky's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know that if Tony ever runs for president, there's going to be that video of where was it that you fell off the uh, stack and of amps? Absinthe played that yeah, night. Yeah, absolutely. I remember that. <laughs> that, that, that it's billiards. I'll tell you, it seems that every time I see this guy sitting across from me, um, somebody's getting mangled. <laughs> <laughs> you, usually it was him. <laughs> Once it was Tony Jones. I don't know. I'm getting nervous around here. That, you know, I may be next. So Crimson Absinthe is kind of, for the most part, on a break right now, right? Uh, Any plans to kind of uh, reemerge and, and play some one-off shows or do some recording, anything like that? Oh, there's been a huge push from a lot of people, and it's usually pushing me in a corner with threats <laughs> saying this needs to happen, including my, my fellow bandmates who I love to death dearly. I have great hairs for each and every one of them. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I'm thinking something maybe like closer towards summer when we have a little bit more like time. Because right now, as you know, I'm involved in a lot of projects, right. so like time is of the essence for me. All like every day, as soon as I get up, there's always something I got to do. Yeah, well, what worries me though is that you know 
this feeling of being threatened and pushed into a corner. Are you sure you're not mentally merging the wrestling and the music? <laughs> a, li- a little now, bit. I had flashbacks. <laughs> now, now, don't suplex the musicians and play guitar in the ring. Just, oh, with yeah, a we, couple of them, I definitely want to suplex them still, but that's for other reasons. <laughs> that's okay, then. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, kind of I like what our good friends Necrophiliac Meat Circus have done, which is that even though they're not an actual, you know, everyday band when there's a call for them to kind of go out there and do a gig they go out there and they they appease the fans out there and do a couple one-off gigs throughout actually actually they're not one-off gigs anymore right Uh, they have uh, quite a few coming down the road yeah i think no they're now once again an official band than it was because of threats (laughs) as a as a a matter of fact in the necros case it was um the threats of our good friend and uh, guitar player dave sage (laughs) who basically (laughs) threatened all those smaller individuals <laughs> into becoming a legitimate full-time <laughs> band again. Well, actually, I can tell you a, a quick story with Alice. Uh, when he got married uh, a couple years ago, uh, I was as went with Dave Sage, mm-hmm. and as I, they wanted me to give a speech during the wedding, during the reception, and the first thing I did was it took Alice to get married for me to pick up the microphone again, and Dave <laughs> fell right out of his chair laughing. <laughs> Let's go back to some local music. We'll come back uh, like a few other of us in this room. Crimson is also a writer, so we'll touch on his work with Motif Magazine. We'll talk about Providence Roller Derby in a bit, too. And, of course, the main reason that Mr. Crimson is here today is because on January 2nd at AS220, one of our favorite venues, he has a big night coming up. Now, this is – here's a radio teaser for you. This isn't your typical night where – three bands play and you have a couple beers and everybody has a good time you go home at the end of the night this is going to be non-stop action now i hate to use that term because i don't yeah, want it yeah, to be yeah, is... <laughs> i don't want it to be associated with some loser organizations out there that also use non-stop action in their name but we'll, we'll get to it in a bit because it's it's, it's you know it's going to be uh it's going to be a big night but before that we're going to do what we always do here we're going to go just for a complete genre change a little local ska now it's the copacetics blood from a stone right here on the Tony Jones Show. But from 